guessing. Bob fears our new neighbor will be a giant cat with slitted eyes and a coiled tail. But Stella says a truck will arrive this afternoon carrying a baby elephant. How do you know? I ask. I sample the air. But all I smell is caramel corn. Oh, I love caramel corn. I can hear her, Stella says. She's crying for her mother. I listen, and I hear the cars charging past. I hear the snore of the sun bears in the, wi in the wire domain. But I don't hear any elephants. You're just hoping, I say. Stella closes her eyes. No, she says softly. Not hoping. Not at all. Jambo. My TV is off, so while we wait for the new neighbor, I ask Stella to tell us a story. Stella rubs her right foot against the wall. Her foot is swollen again in an ugly deep red. If you're not feeling well, Stella, I say, you could take a nap and tell us a story later. I'm fine, she says with her cheerful shifts her weight. Tell us a jumbo story, I say. It's a favorite of mine, but I don't think Bob has ever heard it. Because she remembers everything. Stella knows stories. I like colorful tales with black beginnings and stormy middles and cowless blue sky endings. But any story will do. I'm not in a position to be very picky. Once upon a time, Stella begins, there was a human boy. He was visiting a gorilla family at a place called the zoo. What's a zoo? Bob asks. He's a street smart dog, but there's not much he hasn't seen. A good zoo, Stella says, is a large domain, a wild cage, a safe place to be. It has room to roam and humans who don't hurt. She pauses, considering her words. A good zoo is how humans make amends. Stella moves a bit, groaning softly. The boy stood on the wall, she continues, watching and pointing, but he lost his balance and fell into the wild cage. Humans are clumsy, I interrupt. If only they would knuckle walk. They wouldn't topple so often. Stella nods. Mmm, a good point, Ivan. In any case, the boy lay in motionless in a heap while the humans all gasped and cried. The silverback, whose name was Jumbo, examined the boy as, he was his, as was his duty while his troop watched from a safe distance. Jumbo stroked the child gently. He smelled the boy's pain and then he stood watch. While the boy awoke, his humans cried out, Stay still! Don't move! Because they were certain humans are always certain about things that Jambo would crush the boy's life from him. The boy moaned. The crowd waited, hushed, expected the worst. Jambo led his troop away. Men came down on the ropes and whisked the child into waiting arms. Was the boy all right? Bob asked. He wasn't hurt, Stella said, although I wouldn't be surprised if his parents hugged him many, many times that night in between their scoldings. Bob, who has been chewing his tail, pauses, tilting his head. Is that a true story? I always tell the truth, Stella replies, although I sometimes confuse the facts. Lucky. I've heard that jumbo story so many times. Stella says that humans found it odd that the huge silverback didn't kill the boy. I wonder why that was so surprising. The boy was young, scared. He was alone. He was, after all, just another great ape. Bob nudges me with his cold nose. Ivan, he says, why aren't you and Stella in a zoo? I look at Stella. She looks at me. She smiles sadly with her eyes just a little the way elephants can do. Just lucky, I guess, she says. Arrival. The new neighbor arrives after four o'clock, the four o'clock show. When the truck opens, lumbering towards the parking lot, Bob scampers over to inform us. Bob knows what's happening. He's a useful friend to have, especially when you can't leave your domain. With a groan, Mac lifts the sliding metal door near the food court, the place where the deliveries were made. 
A big white truck is backing up to the door, belching smoke everywhere. When the driver opens the truck, I know Stella is right. A baby elephant is inside. I see her trunk poking out from the blackness. I'm glad for Stella, but when I glance at her, I see she's not glad at all. Stand back, everyone, Mac yells. We've got a new arrival. This is Ruby, folks. 600 pounds of fun to save our sorry butts. This gal is going to sell us some tickets. Mac and two men climb into the back of the cave of the truck. We hear noises, scuffling sound. Mac uses a word when Mac uses when he's angry. Ruby makes a noise, too, like one of the little trumpets they sell at the gift store. Move, Mac says, but still there's no Ruby. Move, he says again. We ain't got all day. Inside her domain, Stella paces as much as she's able. She's two steps away, one step that way, out the other way. She slaps her trunk against the rusty metal bars and she grumbles. Stella, did you hear the baby? Stella mutters something under her breath, a word she never uses. She only uses when she's very angry. Relax, Stella, I say. It'll be okay. Ivan, Stella says, it will never be okay. And I know enough to stop talking. Stella helps. The men still yelling some of the yelling at each other. Mostly they're yelling at poor Ruby. We hear scrambling, pounding, shifting. The side of the truck shudders. I'm starting to like this elephant, Bob whispers. I'm getting the big one, Max says. Maybe she can coax this stupid brat out of the truck. Max opens Stella's door. Come on, girl. He urges. He unties the rope attached to the floor bolt. Stella pushes past Mac, nearly knocking him over. She rushes the best she can, limping heavily towards the open back door of the truck. She catches her swollen foot on the edge of the ramp and winces. Blood trickles down. Halfway up the ramp, she pauses. The noise in the truck stops Ruby's fall silent. S slowly, Stella makes her way up the rest of the ramp. And she groans, on, it groans under the weight, and I can tell how much she is hurting by the awkward way she's moving. At the top of the incline, she stops. She pokes her trunk into the emptiness. We wait. The tiny gray trunk appears again. Shyly, it reaches out, tasting the air. Stella curls her own trunk around the babies. It makes a soft rumbling noises. We wait. We wait some more. A hush falls over the entire big top mall. Thud, thud, step, step, pause. Step, step, pause. And there she is, so small she can fit underneath Stella with room to spare. Her skin sags, and she sways unsteadily as she makes her way down the ramp. Not the greatest specimen, Max says, but I got her cheap from the bankrupt circus out west. They had to ship her from over from Africa, only had her a month before they went bust. He gestures towards Ruby. Thing is, people love babies. Baby elephants, baby gorillas. Heck, give me a baby alligator and I can make a killing. Stella ushers Ruby towards the domain. Mac and the two men follow. At Stella's door, Ruby hesitates. Mac gives Ruby a shove, but she doesn't budge. Doggone it! Get a clue, Ruby, he mutters, but Ruby isn't moving, and neither is Stella. Matt grabs a broom. He raises it instantly. Stella steps in front of Ruby to shield her. Get in the cage, both of you, Mac shouts. Stella stares at Mac, considering gently, but firmly, using her trunk. She nudges Ruby into her domain. Only then does Stella enter. Max slams the door shut with a clang. I see two trunks entwined, and I hear Stella whispering. Poor kid, says Bob. Welcome to Exit A Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan. Old news. When Julia comes, she sits by Stella's domain and watches the new baby. She barely talks to me. Stella doesn't talk to me either. She's too busy snuzzling with Ruby. She is cute, little Ruby, with her ears flapping like palm leaves. But I am handsome and I am strong. 
Bob trots over to circle my belly before he settles down. Just the right spot. (sighs) Give it up, Ivan, he says. You're old news. Julia gets out a piece of paper and a pencil. I can see that she's drawing Ruby. So I move to the corner of my domain to pout. Bob grumbles. He doesn't like it when I disrupt his naps. Homework! Julia's father scolds. Julia sighs and puts her drawing aside. I grunt, and Julia glances in my direction. Poor old Ivan, she says. I've been ignoring you, haven't I? I grunt again, dignified, indifferent grunt. Julia thinks for a moment, then smiles. She walks over to my domain to the spot of the corner where the glass is broken, and she slides through, paper through. She rolls the pencil across the cement floor. You can draw the baby elephant, too, Julia says. I bite the pencil in half with my magnificent teeth, and then I eat some of the paper. Tricks. Even after Julia and her father leave, I try to keep sulking, but it's no use. Gorillas are not, by nature, powders. Stella, I call. Is it a full moon, do you see? Sometimes when we are lucky, we catch a glimpse of the moon through the skylight in the food court. I did, Stella says. She's whispering so that she realized Ruby must be asleep. Is Ruby all right, I ask. She's too thin, Ivan, Stella says. Poor baby. She's been in that truck for days. Mac brought her from the circus the same way he brought me. But she hadn't been there long. She was born in the wild, like us. Will she be okay, I ask? Stella doesn't answer my question. The circus trainers chained her to the floor, Ivan. All four feet, 24 hours a day. I puzzle over why this would be a good idea. I always try to give humans the benefit of the doubt. Why would they do that? I finally ask. To break her spirit, Stella says. So she could learn to balance on a pedestal. So she could stand on her hind legs. So a dog could jump on her back while she was mindless or while she walked mind, in mindless circles. I hear her tired voice thinking of all the tricks Stella has learned. Introductions. When I wake the next morning, I see a little trunk poking in between the bars of Stella's domain. Hello, says a small, clear voice. I'm Ruby, she waves her trunk. Hello, I say. I'm Ivan. Are you a monkey? Ruby asks. Certainly not. Bob's ears perk up, although his eyes stay closed. He's a gorilla, he says, and I'm a dog of uncertain heritage. Why did the dog climb in on your tummy? Ruby asks. Because it's there, Bob murmurs. Is Stella awake, I ask. Aunt Stella's sleeping, Ruby says. Her foot is hurting, I think. Ruby turns her head. Her eyes are like Stella's black and long lash bottoms. Less lakes fringed with tall grass. What's for breakfast, she asks. Soon, I say. When the the mall opens and the workers come. Where? Ruby twists her head in the other direction and there are the other where are they all the other elephants she asks it's just you and stella i say for some reason i feel we have let her down are there more of you she asks no not i say not at the moment ruby picks up a piece of hay and considers it do you have a mom and a dad well i used to Everyone has parents, Bob explains. It's unavoidable. Before the circus, I used to live with my mom and my aunts and my sisters and my cousins, Ruby says. She drops the hay quick and twirls it. They're dead. I didn't know what to say. I'm not only not really enjoying this conversation, but I can see that Ruby's not done talking. To be polite, I say, well, I'm sorry to hear that, Ruby. Humans killed them, she said. Who else? Bob asks. And we all fall silent.